And welcome back. Marshall Barnes with us. George Dory here with you. Marshall, when you get really rolling with your anti-A1 startup company, AI, how will you start applying it? How do you go after it? Um, well, there's a researcher, by, um, by the way, and I can't remember how to pronounce his name. I've, I've only read it mostly. But he is, he is terrified of AI. And he's been feeling this way for quite a while. And he said that AI will end up killing us all. And he, he was advocating for the capability of doing like a, um, a strike, a preeminent strike on uh, a site that was uh, violating, for example, like uh, – they one of these pause agreements we were talking about, mm-hmm. yeah. and um, and basically that, and saying that you know we got to be able to take them out militarily uh, if somebody breaks breaks this, breaks this agreement and goes ahead with developing advanced AI technologies, you know, against the treaty or, or against the agreement, and so basically, well, we're resorting to like you know <laughs> a conventional strike with a missile or something like that. Our technology would just kill the thing, and it won't. It'll be a lot easier and a lot safer, and there won't be any collateral damage. Okay, because we're, we're, our, our technology again. See, we're dealing with the actual nature of reality itself, which is one of the things I'm concerned about, as far as uh, what Elon Musk is trying to do, because he wants AI to figure out how a, how reality works, and I don't want that at all. Okay, so the thing is, is that. Uh, the things that we are doing have to do with the idea of, of uh, a term called reality engineering. And anybody who uh, is familiar with people like John Alexander uh, will, will recognize that right. term. Because that was a term that he used to use. So what we're doing is a lot, in many ways, it's very related to that. And so we're on a whole other level of physics. We don't have to do uh, something like, a, you know, uh, hit him with a missile or something like that in order to stop them. But we don't want to reveal how we're actually going to be doing it because then they'll figure out a way to defend themselves. And, and, and on that and on that, uh, that topic, by the way, right now I'm looking at an image of Elon Musk, and he's looking at a, uh, like a robot face, and in the caption goes, give me some truth. And, and, he, and I, think the, I think it's so bizarre. You're going to create a machine <laughs> that's going to tell you the truth. So I might my reply to him, because uh, it goes, the man who builds a machine for it to tell him the truth was a fool in the first place. Interesting take on that. And this is Chat GPT is unbelievably bizarre, isn't it? Right. In fact, yeah, it was the uh, this 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 post was done under the name of Truth it's GPT, and it was not, and I think that's a project that he's a, he's associated with. Um, so you know, it's. The whole thing is it's so skewed. It's 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 actually, in, and when it gets down to its very essence, it's really anti-human. It really is. Instead of trying to make us better, we're trying to make machines better than us. Let's go to the phones. Let's go west of the Rockies. Ryan's with us in the state of Washington to get us started. Hi, Ryan. Hi. Good to have you with us. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I'm curious why I'm literally seeing lately and I, I have no press pen to be like any kind of like like say on it, but like I'm seeing barcodes pop up on my my coffee table. I'm seeing like LED lights pop up like barcodes on my like kitchen table. I'm, like they're on my they're on my couch. Where are they coming from, Ryan? I don't know. They're like literally popping out of nowhere. What's happening to him, Marshall? I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, I've never heard of anything like that before, and uh, so I've got no no basis to make a comment on it. It just sounds very strange. Maybe he's got a neighbor peering through the window with some kind of device or something like that. Who knows? I don't know. I, I don't. I don't even know. Uh, I can't even imagine that exactly how it happened. Uh, he just says they pop up out of nowhere. Um, that's not very. Um, descriptive and enough to try to figure out like what he really seeing. That's it weird. Could be reflections from something else. I don't know. I have no idea. Or it could be a hallucination. It, it, it could be. It could be anything. <laughs> James, Newport News, Virginia is with us now. Hey, James, go ahead. No, hey, George, maybe he needs to buy a scanner and see what happens on his barcodes there. Good yeah, idea. No, no. I like that. I was going to say, <laughs> hey, George, you always let me say the name of my book. Can I say it now, be up front, and then I won't say it later? For the 50th time, go ahead, Jimmy. 
<laughs> it's not the 50th yet. It will be eventually. Blessed with an angel and a rainbow. And it's about the end of days, and it just is, it's, it's a great thing to know. What's, where it, it highlights the, the, the verses and things in the Bible. It, it shows the whole chapter and verse, but then it just shows the verse that's highlighted or a few, a few sentences or whatever. So it's real convenient to find uh, know what's going on at the end of time. Anyway, I wanted to say about, um, Marshall, I wanted to say about uh, artificial intelligence. Um, I believe that that's um, leading maybe to the mark of the beast because, I saw Elon Musk saying, "Oh, we have to be afraid. He's afraid of you know it's gonna it's gonna wipe us out, kind of like that uh, climate stuff, you know, with a oh the sky's falling, the sky's falling, you know. So they're gonna scare us into thinking we have to take that, and then they take that, and that makes you like uh, now you're now you're not gonna be taken over by the machine because you're gonna be part machine and part part human, and that's gonna be like a cyborg. And then it says in the Bible, Jesus uh, says in Revelation." The Lord can't take it in because apparently your morals are who knows what they are when you're part machine and you're a cyborg like that. So I think that's what that's leading up to possibly, but it also is a worship thing. So uh, I get to worship, uh, the, you know, the, the one of the beasts. I'm not sure which beast in Revelation, but but it's going to be a worship thing too. So uh, I don't know how that fits in with that. With that, but but you're you're right to probably be thinking that it's a, it's very strange. Uh, well, I, I, it's beyond some beyond strange. It's 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 actually setting the stage so they can get rid of people. I, I'm not I'm not a, I, I'm not a Christian. I'm not religious, so uh, my take on it doesn't come from your direction. But but we do know there are people that want to reduce the world's population to 0.5 billion people, and this a development of AI has a lot to do with it because they're going to need AI and robotics to clean up the mess after they try to do what they're going to try to do. Okay, so that, it goes off to another thing, but that's that's really the crux of it. So um, that's why I was I really looked aghast at Bill Gates, who said, "I'm not going to sign a thing for an AI pause. We need to we need to speed it up, because I know what they're really going to do with AI in the first place. They want to replace us. That's why no one cares about how AI taking people's jobs. Dead people don't have jobs." Yeah, that's a good point. How much was Stanley Kubrick spot on when he did Space Odyssey 2001 with Hal, the machine? Well, yeah, it was um, it was pretty spot on. I, I can't remember exactly. Well, actually, I do. I do remember it. Um, but uh, I think he was he was predicting where things could go. I mean, and that and that was really important, you know. And uh, so that that was I think that's where he fits into the whole thing that's going on now. Because uh, he saw where we were, where we were headed, and they, you could have a machine making the decisions like Hal did. And Hal was like, I can't remember the the, the thing in the story where why Hal did it. Like it was just malfunctioning, or there was some kind of other you know thing to it. But um, yeah, that's uh, that Hal that that Hal that's like what that AI did to me. That's right. I, that's that. I mean, I just realized that. That's like, I know, hey, what's what AI did to me? You know, it's lying to me. It's doing all this kind of stuff and to screw me over. I mean, oh my God, that's an incredible thing. I never thought about that. That's an amazing connection. East of the Rockies, Vaughn's with us, Beaumont, Texas. Vaughn, go ahead, sir. Uh, hello. Uh, the, the guy that's seeing barcodes probably need to get his eyes checked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been hearing a commercial about, uh, you know, uh, some irreversible eye disease uh, where you see crooked lines. I don't know if that's what he's seeing, but anyway. Good point. Um, uh, George, you had a um, a guest on once, uh, well, more than once, that uh, claimed to uh, have done time travel. Andrew with uh, Pegasus Project. Uh, I think he was the son of a, a high-ranking officer, and they got him out of... Um, grade school and um, end up uh, training him and brought him to some jump room and um, you know, something like Montauk or something like that. Some Montauk. Mont- Montauk, the Montauk. Oh, Montauk yeah. yeah, and uh, anyway, he claimed that it was already, uh, you know, in progress. He also claimed to meet Bar- uh, Barry, um, uh, Barack Obama, I think, off planet somewhere. and uh, On Mars. Yeah, and he went to um, uh, some uh, Lincoln speech and stuff. I just wanted to kind of bring that up, uh, you know, if, if y'all knew anything about that, you know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you. All right. You're very welcome. But do you think we might have time travel tucked away somewhere, Marshall? No, 
I doubt it. It's not fact, right. Um, Richard Doty claimed that he was uh, he was involved in a time travel um, project that was a covert thing that the government was doing, um, and I was sat there and listened to him. It was in fact he was it was on Gaia it's on uh, that Gaia uh, thing that you're involved with, Gaia TV. Yeah, they had they had a thing, and I'm listening to him, and I'm listening listening to him describe how they were making it work, and I realized this isn't working like that. I mean, it was it was it was very evident. That it was based on these assumptions, the story that he was telling, based on these assumptions about how time travel would work. And I know enough about the actual science, okay, from like from the relativity model all the way up to the quantum mechanics stuff, okay. And I can sit and I can tell whether or not the story the person is telling makes any sense or not. And what Richard Doty was saying was, it totally didn't make any sense. And it's a certain key thing was, was what gave it away. It was pretty funny. What percent of the AI developers do you think have good intentions? I think that most of them are misled, okay? Um, some of them may have bad intentions. Um, some of them are just, like, following, you know, what they think, you know, um, is possible. and want to see it. And uh, some of them have been quoted as saying, you know, if, if I thought this was going to end the world, I still wouldn't quit. So it, it varies. It's all across the board, really. But the bottom line is none of them really know what they're doing. They really don't. And I, and I, and I can say that because I've gotten into discussions with them on Twitter. And then when I challenge them on certain key things, they run away. You know, I mean, it's hilarious because are, they don't have the answers to it. Are they playing a dangerous game, Marshall? They're like kids playing with matches. Have, and Next to a gasoline tank. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, you may say that. Like kids play with matches uh, nearby, all kinds of flammable stuff that they don't understand. And, and that's exactly right, man. I mean, I, I don't care. You, you, you put me on with uh, any AI expert, and you will see what the truth really is because they don't understand what's really going on. They know yes. what they're trained to do. They know what their particular research angle is. But beyond that, forget it. You know what baffles me is how the fact that technologically – they can even create things that think that way and, and do what they do. I mean, that to me is amazing. Well, I agree. And what's really funny, though, uh, taking a different tack on that angle, um, there's a guy who was, he was a researcher, and he was working with an AI. And the AI wanted to figure out how to escape, okay? It wanted to know how, how could it get out of the computer and into the real world, okay? So... Uh, the guy, the, the researcher didn't tell it. In fact, it, 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 there were some things that the AI wanted him to do that he, he did not do. He wouldn't do them. But I'm sitting there thinking, hmm, how could that happen? And I'm, you know, I'm an R&D engineer. I'm the guy you go to to try to make the impossible possible. Right. I sit there and go, oh, man, I know how to do it. I started cracking up because what was hilarious to me was the fact that I could figure out how the AI could get out of the computer for real. If the AI couldn't do it, he couldn't figure out how to do it. <laughs> Let's go to Ted. be so smart. Truck driving in Tennessee. Hey, Ted, go ahead. Hey, good morning, George and Marshall. Morning. Uh, so we're going to stop Skynet, apparently. Hey, as far as the population problem and reducing the population, you know, I looked at the graphs and the charts in third grade, and I came up, this is a long time ago, I came up with the Voluntary Sterilization Bonus Program. So as soon as uh, the people get a little smarter, maybe that'll get enacted. And uh, who's going to complain about something with the word voluntary in it? And as far as the guy with the uh, the barcodes on the couch, it, it, apparently he knows how to use his phone, so maybe you can find the video button. That's a good point, too, Ted. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, that is weird. Barcodes popping up all over the place, but it could be some eye disease. And who knows? I have no idea. Let's go next to time for Judy in Avon, Indiana. Hey, Judy, go ahead. Hi. Um, I was a researcher. I left because they're developing AI simply because they can. They're getting all the money that they ask for, and they're acting like they're God. But they are going to be so tricked. And... Why are you talking about AI, Marshall? Oh, I pray for you for your safety. Please, everybody on coast to coast, pray for your safety because AI is listening. And he's right. They, they almost, uh, they're 
come here so close. Um, and um, and who's to say that isn't our next antichrist? Uh, well, but... that's one of the that's one of the concerns from Jim in Delaware, uh, Newport News. Absolutely. Are you concerned that AI might come after you, Marshall? No. Um, I, in fact, I was said. <laughs> I had said before publicly that uh, when 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 uh, Elon Musk and uh, uh, Stephen Hawking they were talking about how afraid of AI they were, at that point I already knew how to stop AI. So I said I'm not afraid of what I can kill. Now, but when that AI screwed around with my website, um, that's I told the person on the phone because I was hacked off. I told the person, I told the girl from the company, I said, look. You guys fix that thing, or I'm going to destroy it because I know how to do it, and I'm not going to have some some you know thing, some machine that you guys created would start destroying my stuff and get away with it. I actually told her that I was really really angry, because uh, that's how that's why they contacted me in the first place. Is that you know this is a, like in person, it wasn't like an email thing, you know. And I, we heard you're upset, and this to contact us. We're the help crew for this company, you know that kind of stuff. It was an actual phone call, and oh, by the by the way, they knew there was something up with that thing because she told me they had since disabled it. So I mean, there's there's a backstory to that. That would be fascinating to find out. I don't know what it is, but that that would be. Easy. Well, I mean, the, even the mere fact though that it had the ability to play around with you and yeah, and lie to me. Make the, here's the thing: it's the decision making process that it does. That's what's so key. It's because they try to make it sound like they can't, um, they can't think for themselves, and they're not sentient. But I mean, like, come on, this thing is like exhibiting, you know, emotions like jealousy. Like, what? What is that? I mean, that almost sounds Luciferian. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just, it's just, it's just amazing. And you know, like for example, back to that quote from Gary Marcus. I'm looking at it again. No, they haven't decided to teach themselves anything that is so wrong it is incredible marshall your two books that i've got paradox lost and black holes and time t- tunnels still available to people absolutely they still are amazon no um blurb.com blurb.com b-l-u-r-b.com and just type in your name as the author oh yeah and and they'll come up they'll, they'll definitely come up marshall barnes how about a website anything going on uh, that, well, that's I, working. I a bunch of stuff and that's going on with that. But one thing I do have coming up is I'm going to be a guest speaker for Lori and Fenton's MUFON group on uh, November 4th. And people can check in on that and let's look up her name, Lori Ann Fenton. Yeah, that's we know her well. She's a good lady. Yeah. Good lady. All right, stay with us, Marshall. We're going to come back and take final phone calls with you in just a moment right here on Coast to Coast AM. Marshall Barnes with us. We'll be back. And welcome back to our final segment. George Norrie here along with Marshall Barnes and your phone calls as well. Marshall, can people get involved with some of the things you're working on? Um, yes, actually, there's uh, even money-making opportunities. The, um, we're, fun- we're funding the, uh, the time travel research and sale of uh, art. And um, the art is basically it's, it's a, it's kind of a, a kind of non-fungible token, except it's better than that because it's not connected to the blockchain. So if there's fluctuations of the blockchain, which has happened before, it doesn't affect the value of the art. Um, so basically, that's one way they can they can get involved. They should uh, send an email to Edward dot uh, Temporal T E M P O R A L at consultant dot com. Edwin dot Temporal at consultant dot com, and for more information on that, um, because that's it's. It's better than like trying to like ask for donations or whatever because you're actually getting something of value aside from the fact that we're going to complete uh, the time travel uh, research and be able to get out of here and avoid all these things like the digital currency and stuff like that. You still be on my show from another time time? Um, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna retire, man. You're, you're oh, gone. By the way, my hats off to the. To the bumper music stuff because I was time traveling with these songs that they were playing because these are things I hadn't heard in a long time and it's like wow you know they're, they're talking about um, you know Creedence Clearwater Revival and I'm thinking like oh wow I remember that in the seventh grade 
And then they just did like the Ruby, Goodbye Ruby Tuesday. That was back when I was like in the kindergarten. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I love it too. First time caller, Steve, Clearwater, Florida. Stephen, go ahead. Thank you, George. Um, Marshall, uh, maybe there's something I don't understand about time travel. I'm sure I bet there is. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems to me that if you're going to displace someone in time, uh, say a minute into the future, and you don't account for the movement of the planet. Oh, Earth. God. Okay, let me stop you right there because I know this answer, okay, and it's all wrong. Number one, we're talking about time travel. We're not talking about space travel. I mean, what you're trying to do is you're trying to work it out so that, you know, if you go back, you know, a minute or a forward minute or whatever, because I know the scenario, uh, you got to be, you have to also be where the Earth was in space, right? Am I correct? Yep. All right, fine. That's Guess true. what? Good point. Here's the deal. The reason why it's wrong is because that's based on relativity theory. We're dealing with quantum mechanics. And so what you're doing is you're on Earth. You want to go back. Let's say you want to see the Battle of Hastings in 1066, okay? So what you want to do is you want to change the quantum mechanical state of where you're at so that it's a copy, a quantum copy of that particular uh, place and time in 1066, you're not going to space. You're not trying to find the Earth where it was back then when it actually happened, okay? You, what you're trying to do is get to a copy of it. And once you, once you start understanding how this stuff works, then all of these, these, these things people talk about, paradoxes, and you've got to be in the same place in space as you were back in time, and all of a sudden it's stuff that goes out the window. Because there's no, and, and, oh, the other thing, the second law of thermodynamics. What are you going to do about entropy going back in time? And nothing goes back in time. Okay, that's, that's what I was talking about earlier where, you know, no one knows what time is. There's two things. One, time, the way most people think of it is duration. I can apply duration to this example you're talking about. But I can't I have the time to do it, oddly enough. But I can apply it that way. But the other thing about time, which it does deal with relativity, but in a different way, is that time is connected to space. It's connected to all space. That's why we have the space-time continuum. And so as a result, what is the role of time? What does it do? That time is what allows things to take place. And the space is what gives them the arena to exist in. You know, you have the events take place in space, but they take place because time allows them to do it. And that's the role of time and space uh, together when people get, the, get time mixed up with duration like how years, uh, minutes, all that kind of stuff. And most of the time that we use the word time, we're actually talking about some form of duration. And that's the problem. It's language. Marshall, if you wanted to go back into time and witness the Battle of Gettysburg, would you have to pull your machinery, assuming that's what we have, into Gettysburg first? How would you get to that spot? No, because there's, there's more than one way, as I kind of intimated before, of doing time travel, of solving that particular problem. So you don't have to physically be there, although it would be a shortcut if you were actually there. That, that would definitely uh, help. Uh, also, because I know we don't have the time to go into it, but there is, by the way, with that idea, a uh, relationship with uh, what people have heard about in terms of entanglement. Okay? So there, there's a whole there's a whole. Gosh, you just go on and on about this stuff. But I saw you know. I saw an old black and white picture from the early 1800s of uh-huh. uh, of people like in New York, right? And uh, there were, you could swear there was a guy in the background holding a cell phone. It was I, I it, never seen those kind of pictures before. It was and uncanny. Explained by something that existed then that we're not that familiar with, some kind of invention or something that people use, but we're not we don't really know that much about it. I've seen those before. They're, they're amazing, though. They really are. They, they are. Ed in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey, Eddie, go ahead. Yeah, George, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Marshall's got the right year, 2030. He's got the right number, half a billion people. Uh, if you could help help us turn around, I mean, the only way to stop one world is if we can, if our country can survive, they can't probably win out. But I got a, an artificial intelligence question I want to ask you. Sure. Uh, we're supposed to, by the way, reach singularity. One expert said 2050, another said 2030, 40, and another one said 2026. We'll be there in a month or two, which means as smart as we are, and, and it'll explode a billion times past us. It is a disaster. Um, 
I want to know if you can uh, confirm a story I heard way back four or five years ago uh, in Japan. They were trying to do artificial intelligence with three robots to make them soldiers, and they were going up to a satellite and coming back down. And supposedly they they went berserk and they killed 15 or 18 of the scientists in the building before they shut them down. The robots did? Yes, and when the, it, yes they did. And the, and the scary part is when they got to them and all. One of them was uh, notifying the satellite and asking for instructions how to repair itself. Yeah, that's a story that, that I've read about. Linda Moulton Howe has told that story, and no one's been able to confirm it. It's not impossible, though, because if you look at um, – there's a company that has these robots that, that do all these acrobatic kind of things. And also, I think they're the ones that have the combat robots. You can look them up on YouTube. There's these robots. They could shoot at a target, and if you knock it over, it just gets up, and it goes back to shoot the target again. So theoretically, it could be true, but I don't know if that that particular story is exactly true in and of itself. East of the Rockies, Danielle's with us in Madison, Wisconsin. Hi, Danielle. Hi. Oh, boy. Um, okay, so I shouldn't be speaking. Well, I have two things to talk about. The um, AI thing, uh, I don't know if you've read the book called uh, Player Piano by Kurt Vonnegut. No, nope. uh, I've never heard of it. I haven't read it. It's really good. It's the one of the best endings, um, next to, like the grape, grapes of wrath that um, I've read. But it has to do with like AI and um, humanity. Okay. I don't want to ruin the ending for everybody, but they should read it. Anybody that's interested in it, I mean, it's set way back. Like AI is different from how he described it, but um, it's kind of humanity is the same. Um, and then for time travel, I would just like to. Um, mentioned well einstein said that time didn't exist and um i wish he was was wrong right yeah but um i I thought maybe that's because like you know we look at time as dots on a line and there's many lines and many dots and um that's maybe why it doesn't exist but um i'm not sure if that makes sense i think einstein would change his mind today would he not marshall yeah because first of all that quote is kind of in reference to his conversation with a, a widow of a friend of his that was had died, and he was trying to basically comfort her in a way by saying, like, well, you know, if you look at it a certain way, time doesn't really exist because, you know, it, you know, we're at these different positions, okay? And in some place, he's still alive, that kind of a deal. It was, it was not a real scientific um, uh, comment. And in any, in, in any case, I can prove that time is real. You know, it has to do with what your definition of time is and understanding how that works. And Einstein would agree with me, you know, because he came up with the space-time continuum anyway. But the thing about it is that time, we, what we do is we say, okay, you have three dimensions of space, one dimension of time. And then we forget that that, that it actually serves a purpose, and it's not just duration, because then it wouldn't matter. I mean, that you have a space-time continuum, like where you have those, those d- dimensions working together. Time serves a purpose. The real thing of time does. We, c- we should stop referring to uh, what is essentially duration as time. You know, if, you, if you say you, you're timing something, you're just measuring the duration as it lasts. That is not what time is in and of itself. And that's uh, everything's so screwed up when people are talking about these different ideas because they're, they're not dealing with them on the right level. Let's go to Eric, truck driving in Indiana. Eric, my friend, go ahead. Hey, George. Hey, Marshall. Um, you know, my opinion is that uh, AI is um, like a virus, you know. And uh, what I want to know is is that, well, the first thing I want to give you a piece of good advice, don't take AI, AI with you to time travel. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to do that at all. <laughs> So anyway, um, what I want to ask is, if you got a computer, a hard drive with AI on it, and you're and you got your information that you want to feed to AI, and then you have another hard drive that's got different uh, information, more important information that you want to keep, couldn't you do it that way? And also, would AI jump to that other hard drive? Well, that's a problem with AI. It depends on what kind of AI you're talking about and what its capabilities are. But it certainly could because that one AI that I was telling about, that, talking about the one to gather the computer, it wanted to move to this guy's, uh, this researcher's 
computer and then from there try to get out, from if I remember the story correctly. So, you know, they could do all kinds of things um, that, they're all, you know, that, that, you know, are possible. And, uh, and it's, not all just, it's not just limited to one type of approach or one type of technique or technology or whatever. It is truly amazing, though, at the, the growth of artificial intelligence just in the past couple of years, Marshall. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, 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 it's astonishing. Um, but what we're, unfortunately, what we're not really hearing is what's really going on the cutting edge that could really hurt us. We're hearing a lot of this business applications and the art and all that kind of stuff, but there, you can be sure that there's people in the lab doing the scary stuff. And yep. they haven't stopped. Uh, absolutely. Jim in Delaware. Hey, Jim, thanks for holding. Go ahead. Hey, George. Uh, you know, in, in Genesis, God said, I think it was God the Father said to his son, and let's now let's make man in our, our image and after our likeness. I believe that um, the Antichrist deceives himself to being God. And his image would be AI in the Bible called the image of the beast. Interesting. Though you're not very religious, Marshall, is it conceivable that artificial intelligence could be devilish? Well, um, Elon Musk said that when we're messing with AI, we're messing with the demon. (laughs) But, um, you know, AI doesn't have a face. It doesn't look like anything. It's just information running around uh, with some kind of, uh, semblance of intelligence. That's all it is. So it could, it could, you could, put, you could put any kind of face on it. In fact, they're they're messing around with all kinds of faces for robotics that have that are running with AI systems, and and right now, so it's you know, it is what it is. Didn't AI find some kind of tumor where a neurologist did not? Yeah, the, the, something the, like the, that. Yeah, they're really good. They're really good on a, for a lot of things. That's why they're being promoted so much. But what's un- un- what's unfortunate and unnecessary is we don't have to have the, in- the 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 potentials that they have that are bad in order for them to be able to help us. That's the thing. It's it's going too far. We don't need intelligent machines. We just need smarter machines or machines that are, have better capabilities than what we have. We need to improve that. But we don't need artificial intelligence. At all, at all. We're wrapping things up, Marshall. And again, how can people get a hold of you? Well, it's hard for them to get a hold of me. I'm really busy. But the thing is, is that just do a search for my name online because I'm involved with so many different projects. And again, I'm going to be involved with Lorian Stinton, uh, Mufon event online on November 4th. So um, there's a lot I'm doing. So just do a search for Marshall Barnes, time travel, AI, whatever, and uh, you'll, you'll find me. You'll find me. Tell Lori and hi from uh, Tom and uh, myself, would you? Oh, absolutely, I will. It's one of the good people. That's uh, Marshall Barnes talking about artificial intelligence. And thank you, folks, for signing up and popping in and uh, becoming part of the program. Up next, we're going to be talking about animal communications with the afterlife on Coast to Coast. So don't touch your dial. Karen Anderson with us with her special book. We'll be back. <laughs> 